Hello everyone, in this video, we're going to talk about coordinates in proof. Now, for our learning target, I can prove theorems and properties of geometric figures using coordinate geometry. Now, before anything else, you need to recall first the properties uh, that we have for each quadrilateral so that later on, if you encounter um, quadrilaterals in coordinate proofs, then um, it would be easier for you to apply the necessary formulas of whatever um, concept or properties that you are going to prove. Okay, so these are the properties that I am referring to. So, for example, you should know that if we are going to prove if the given um, quadrilateral is a square, so that means you're going to look into these properties wherein all the sides are equal. And aside from that, all angles are equal and measures 90 degrees. So that's it. Okay, again, you need to be particular with the properties of each quadrilateral. If in case that you encounter this in the coordinate proofs, then you do have the idea already. Next one, aside from quadrilaterals, you should be particular as well with the classification of triangles so that if you will be able to encounter um, proofs regarding equiangular, equilateral, isosceles, then you know um, of what particular properties that you are going to consider if you are going to prove an isosceles triangle, equilateral triangle, etc. Okay, so now let's gonna have our coordinates in proofs. For our first example, prove that the midpoint of the hypotenuse of a right triangle is equidistant from the vertices. So first of all, if you're going to prove um, such case, you're going to um, illustrate first or place the figure first in the Cartesian plane um, following the guidelines that we have in placing figures in our coordinate plane. Okay? So later, I will give you a thorough explanation on how are we going to put um, the coordinates for each of vertices of the given figure that we have so that it would be simpler for us later on for our computations in our proof. Okay? Now, aside from that, you should also learn on how are you going to specify the given data and the concept that you're going to prove based on the general statement given. And of course, based on the illustration that you have created. Okay? So in here, as you can see in my illustration, I have right triangle ABC, wherein Q is my midpoint, and my hypotenuse in here is segment AB. Because um, segment AB is the opposite side of our right triangle angle or 90 degree angle now here in our general statement we are going to prove that the midpoint of the hypotenuse of a right triangle is equidistant from the vertices so where are our vertices here in the illustration so as you can see we do have here vertex a b and then c so if this are the vertices that we are referring to and our midpoint is Q, that means we are going to prove that QA, QB, and QC are equidistant. Okay? Or they do have the same um, length or distances. Okay? So, this is based on the general statement that we have already. Okay? Moving on to our um, step by step process. So again, as I have mentioned a while ago, we're going to draw first a right triangle in our coordinate plane. So I came up with this triangle ABC. Locate the right angle. So our right angle in here is angle BCA. At the origin and leg CA on X axis. Now, why is it that we, um, we are supposed to have our right angle at the origin and our CA as our, um, as our leg CA on the x-axis? 
because um, if we do have our side or segment of the given figure coincide our x and y axis, it would be easier for us to um, manipulate or even think of the coordinates of each vertices. Okay? Conveniently, label the coordinates using multiples of 2 because we are dealing with a midpoint. So, if you can still remember the formula for midpoint, we do have there um, the um, denominator of 2. So, that means if we do have here our coordinates would be multiples of 2, it would be easier for us to simplify later on if we are going to be dealing with the midpoint. Okay, so for our step 2, so we are going to find first the midpoint or the coordinates of our hypotenuse AB. So although I have already here the data, the coordinates of Q would be AB. Let's check. So actually, I just put it here already. I came up with the coordinates of this point Q based on the given coordinates that I have planted in here for vertex A and B. Let's see. So we have for B, the coordinates are 0 to B. And for A, we do have 2A0. Now to look for the midpoint or the coordinates of the midpoint, which is represented by point Q, let's gonna use midpoint formula. So, substituting in the midpoint formula, we do have in here um, x sub 1 plus x sub 2 all over 2 and y sub 1 plus y sub 2 all over 2. So, substituting our coordinates, so in the midpoint formula, we do have 0 plus 2a, 2b plus 0, I simply copy the 2. Okay? So, 0 plus 2a, so that would be 2a. 2b plus 0, that would be 2b. And simplify further, 2a divided by 2 and 2b divided by 2. So, that means the coordinates of our midpoint Q are a and b. Okay? So, for our x-coordinate, it is a. And for our y coordinate is it is b. Okay, so that means I do have the correct coordinates for our point Q or midpoint. So this time let's gonna move on to what are we supposed to prove? So we're gonna look for the distance of QB, QA, and QC. Now, so of course you need to recall the formula for getting the distance of the two points okay so hopefully you can still remember so this is our formula x sub 2 minus x sub 1 quantity squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 quantity squared okay so you get the square root of that and that would be our distance okay there so, I'm going to look for the distance first of QA, point Q and point A. So, substituting in the formula, so based here in our um, coordinates given. So, for our um, Q, we do have AB and for our A, we do have 2A0. So, substituting in the distance formula, we would have A minus 2A quantity squared plus b minus 0 quantity squared so we'll have simplify a minus 2a negative a negative a squared and then b minus 0 b b squared so simplify further negative a squared that would be positive a plus b squared there so that means we do have square root of a squared plus b squared so that's the representation of the distance of point a and q now, let's proceed with QB this time. Another vertex. So, substituting the coordinates for point Q and point B. So, we're gonna have here A minus 0 squared. That would be A squared. And then B minus 2B negative B squared. Simplify further. We're gonna have A squared 
plus b squared. So as of this moment, we can see that QA it is equidistant to QB. So one more, we're going to um, look for the distance of QC this time. So A minus 0, so that would be A. B minus 0, that would be B. So we do have in here exponent squared for both A and B. Are we going to simplify this? So let's just gonna remove the parentheses in here. And as you can see, it's still um, a squared plus b squared. I mean, square root of a squared a plus b squared. So as you can see, we got the same distances for QA, QB, and QC. So with that, we can write our final answer this way because QA is equal to QB is equal to QC then the midpoint of the hypotenuse of a right triangle is equidistant from the vertices of the triangle. We have proven already this general statement given. Since QB is the same with QA and with QC. So the midpoint is actually equidistant to all the vertices. Okay? Now moving on. Next, the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. So, same manner, we're gonna prepare the illustrations that we have. So, I decided to have this um, illustration. So, parallelogram. I make sure that one of the sides of the parallelogram coincides with one of our x or y axis or maybe both. So, in here... Um, I coincide one of the sides to our x-axis and the one of the vertices um, is our origin in the Cartesian plane. So, now, um, I have planted the following coordinates for the three um, vertices in here. So, for M, I have 0, 0. For A, I have 2, A, 0. And for C, I have 2, B, to see. Now, of course, um, the coordinates of our B depends on the given coordinates that we have for point A and point C. So, be careful in putting the coordinates for that. So, in here, since the length of the side of this parallelogram, okay, the side I am referring to is side AM or segment AM, is represented by 2a therefore the length of cb is also 2a and as you can see the um, x coordinate of our point c is represented by 2b so if the length of cb is represented um, same as am which is 2a so if we do still have the representation of this distance from y to here, y-axis to the point C, it's 2B, so just simply add. So the representation of this coordinate, um, this coordinate would be 2A plus 2B. 2B from here, and 2A as the length of this side, which is equal to CB. So therefore, the x-coordinate of our point B is 2A plus 2B. And then our y would be same with the y-coordinate of our point C, which is 2C. Okay, moving on. Next to this is you need to specify what is the given and what are we supposed to prove. Okay, specifically. So in here, I have parallelogram MA. B, C. And uh, we're going to prove that MB, so MB, so this one, the yellow broken line, I represented yellow broken line for our diagonal. So diagonals of parallelogram bisect each other. So we do have two diagonals in here, MB and CA or AC. Now, if we're going to check or to prove that the diagonals really bisect each other, then 
specifically, we're going to look into um, the distances of or the lengths of our segment MB. Okay. If this really bisect our segment AC, so in here, and then AC also bisect our segment MB. So how? How are we going to um, justify um, this statement that MB bisect AC and AC bisect MB as well? Okay? So let's gonna start with our step-by-step -step guidelines. So first one, again, as I have mentioned, we're going to place the parallelogram in the Cartesian plane and make sure that we make use of multiples of 2 um, to specify our coordinates so that if it involves midpoints, it would be easier for us to simplify later on. Now, for our step 2, show that CD is equal to AD and MD is equal to BD. Okay, so if MB really bisects CA, therefore CD should be equal to DA. And then if CA bisects MB, therefore MD should be equal to DB. Okay, bisect means divide the given segment or angle or figure into two congruent parts. Okay, now, so again, um, prior to that, maybe let's gonna look for the midpoint first of the given diagonals. Because as you can see, we are gonna be proving um, if the CD is the same with DA and MD is the same with DB. So let's gonna find first um, the mid the coordinates of the midpoints of our diagonal so that we can make use of that or utilize that one to find out the distances later on. Okay? So now, I started with the midpoint of AC. So substituting X sub 1 plus X sub 2 all over 2 and Y sub 1 plus Y sub 2 all over 2. So again, we're gonna be utilizing in here the coordinates that we use to represent the following um, vertices. So for C, we do have 2B, 2C, and for A, we do have 2A0. Substituted in here, so 2A plus 2B all over 2, and 0 plus 2C all over 2. Simplify the numerators first, but as you can see, 2A plus 2B, um, we cannot combine the two terms. Um, so, just simply copy this one for the meantime. And then 0 plus 2C, it's 2C. Now, both numerators are divisible by 2. So, we can simplify further by dividing um, each terms by um, the given denominator. So, 2A divided by 2. And 2B divided by 2, that is A plus B already. And for 2C divided by 2, that is C. So, we're done already. So, the distance or uh, the, the coordinates, I mean, of our midpoint represented by D is A plus B, C. Okay? Now... Moving on. Okay. So, we're going to show this time. So, other way around, let's gonna check if we will have the same answer. So, we're gonna look for the midpoint of AC and MB to check for the coordinates of our midpoint considering our, um, considering our um, segment MB. Okay, so substitute in the formula the coordinates of our point M and point B. So in here, as you can see, we do have the same coordinates for point B there or the midpoint. Okay, so we got A plus B, C. So with this, we can now proceed with finding the distances of DC, DA, 
D, B, and D, M. Okay? And then, compare later on. Okay. So, again, as I have mentioned, we got already the coordinates of our midpoint, which is A plus B, C. Okay. I will start with the distance of C and D. So, substituting in the distance formula, I got in here square root of square um, of the difference of A and B added to the square of C. Okay? Now, I proceed to AD. So, substituting in the formula, I would have A minus B squared plus C squared. So, we got the same answer in here, A minus B um, quantity squared plus C squared, square root of the sum of those. So, it's the same with um, the distance that we've got from CD. So, that means CD is equal to AD. So, in here, we have proven that um, both um, distances in here are congruent. So, in this case, we can say that MB really bisects CA. Another. Let's move on to finding the distance of MD and DB or BB. Okay. So, looking at the distance formula, I can see in here quantity A plus B squared plus C squared. So, next is for BD, substituting in the formula. So, be careful there. Okay, simplify. Next is negative A minus B. There. And then, C minus 2C, it's negative C. Simplify further. We're gonna have positive A plus B. So, let's rewrite it in a way where the first term is positive. So, we multiply both, um, both terms by negative 1. So, we're gonna have um, A plus B, quantity squared, and then negative C squared. So, that would be positive C squared. Now, take a look with the distances of um, MD and DB. As you can see, both are the same. So, that means if MD is congruent to DB, therefore, CA also bisect the diagonal MB. So, for our final answer, since CD is equal to AD and MD is equal to BD, then MB bise bisects segment AC and AC bisects segment MB as well. So, we have proven the given property in here. Now, next one, the diagonals of an isosceles trapezoid are congruent. Okay, so again, we're going to have our specific um, given and uh, what are we supposed to prove. So, with this illustration, I have my isosceles trapezoid in here. What are we going to prove only would be the diagonals are congruent. I make use as well of um, the broken line in here, the yellow one, as our diagonals. So, this one is easier than the previous examples that we have. So, prove um, segment BD is congruent to segment AC. So, as it says that. So, that means after we place the isosceles trapezoid in coordinate plane, so, we're going to simply show that AC is congruent to BD. How? Of course, we're going to look for the distance of point B from D and the distance of point A from C. Okay? So, we're gonna be using distance formula, of course. So, substituting the coordinates for A and for C. So, we're going to have um, square root of quantity A plus B squared plus C squared. And how about for BD? Substituting the coordinates as well, we're gonna have square root of quantity A plus B squared plus C squared. 
So as you can see, we got the same representation for each um, distance for AC and for BP. Now, for our final answer, since AC is equal to BD, the diagonals of an isosceles trapezoid are congruent. So, as easy as that. Now, so take note of the following generalization or synthesis that we have for you to be guided and how are you going to create or to visualize the figures in Cartesian plane so that it would be easier for you to present your proofs after you created or placed the figure in Cartesian plane. So take note of the following guidelines or tips in placing the figures in coordinate plane. Also, I'd like you to take note of the necessary formulas or concepts that you may also use, particularly if you are going to prove if the given statements or if the given segments are parallel or if the given segments are perpendicular to one another and what if you're going to look for the slope of the given segment or side. So, these are the formulas that um, you can use in proving coordinate geometry. Aside from the rules or formulas that I have stated a while ago, these are one of the common formulas that we encounter in proving coordinate geometry. So take note of the midpoint formula and the distance formula. So for your practice exercises, you can go on to um, proving this trapezoid mid-segment theorem. So what are those um, statements regarding trapezoid mid-segment theorem? So, according to this theorem, the mid-segment of a trapezoid is parallel to the basis and the length of the mid-segment of a trapezoid is half the sum of the lengths of the basis. Okay, so if you forgot already, so where is the mid-segment of our given um, trapezoid? So, here our um, segment DE in here, this is the mid-segment that I am referring to. So, here's the illustration for you to be able to um, be guided and how are you going to prove this one. So, again, if you are going to prove if the given segment is parallel, you can use the concept that I have presented a while ago in the summary. Okay? So, next Again, as I have mentioned, this is our mid-segment or median okay, of the given trapezoid. So, again, you are going to prove if this given mid-segment is actually parallel to the bases that we have in here. So, the upper base and then the lower base in here. So, just apply the concept that I have mentioned if the slope of this segment is equal to the slope of the other segment therefore they are considered parallel okay next okay as an additional task or assignment you can also work on this so that you can practice the coordinates in proof and you will be able to familiarize the rules concepts and formulas that you are going to um, apply in order for you to prove the given property or theorem of the specific polygons or figures that we have. And these are the photo sources that I make use in this presentation. And there, okay, the hierarchy of quadrilateral, properties of quadrilaterals, types of triangle. And these are also the content references that I make use. The EMAT 10 work text in mathematics by Orlando, grade 10 mathematics patterns and practicalities, next century mathematics, and of course our Kuiper LMS. So, thank you so much for listening. I hope you learned something new in this video. Um, good luck and see you on our next video lesson.